Hey guys, it's Kate and today I want to tell you everything about the basic color theory. So we're not going to go into very, very deep detail about um, color theory as it is, but I just want to share with you the basic notions and we will also talk about color schemes, primaries, secondaries and tertiary colors. Then we will talk about neutrals, temperature, value, intensity. So let's begin. I will be using soft pastel as it is my medium of choice, but you can be using any medium that you like from watercolor to acrylics and oils. So let's begin. The first thing that we will do is we will create our color wheel and we will start by the primary colors. So what are primary colors? Colors that cannot be mixed from other colors like yellow, blue and red. So let's create the color wheel. So here I have three pastels and I start with my yellow and I will place it here in the middle. So this is going to be my first primary. Now, with my red, I'm going to place it here, diagonally from the yellow. And then the last primary is the blue. And we will place it on the left side. So this is a traditional approach to the color wheel, which is split by temperature. We will get to that soon. But most importantly is that the primary colors, as I said, they cannot be mixed from, the, from other colors and they are yellow, red, and blue. Then there is also a more uh, detailed approach. Primary should actually look like yellow, cyan, and magenta. So it's either yellow, red, and blue, or yellow, magenta, and cyan. So this is the most important thing about the primary colors. Now, what are the secondary colors? So the secondary colors are the colors resulting from the mixture of the two primary colors. For example, yellow and red, red and blue, blue and yellow. So we can do this two ways. We can mix the pastels, if we're working in pastels in this case, or we can use the colors that are already ready. So what I can do is I can take the resulting colors and place them on my color wheel. So in between yellow and red, I can place my orange. Next, I will place my purple in between red and blue. And then I will place my green So we have the primaries, the secondaries, and now there's also such a thing called as tertiary colors. So tertiary colors result from the mixture of primary and secondary colors. So for example, if we use the same pastels that we used here, the red and the yellow, and I will apply quite a heavy layer of yellow and add just a bit of this red and mix it together. So this is still an orange, but it's a more yellow orange than the mixture of the secondary color. The same goes here. I will add my red first, and then I will add a bit of yellow and mix it in. And this is going to be a more red orange. So here we have a transition. We can do the same thing for all our colors. So we can mix red and blue. And in this case, we will have more red because it's closer towards the red. And just a bit of blue. And we'll mix it. So this is going to create a red violet. So you can see how much more red it is than here. And now we're going to do the same thing and create a blue-violet. So the next thing that we do is we create the last tertiary couple and it's going to be yellow and blue. So I'm using the same yellow and I'm going to put more yellow on this side and add a bit of blue. 
and this is going to give me a yellow green. So this is a yellow green. Here is our color that is in between the yellow and blue. And here I'm going to add more blue. And just a bit of yellow. And this is going to be our blue green. So here is our color wheel. We have the primaries, which by hue are yellow, red, and blue. We're not going to take the magenta and cyan into consideration at the moment. Then we have our secondaries, which are orange, purple, and green. And then we have our tertiary colors, which are called in accordance to where they stand closer. So in this case, the yellow orange and the red orange, the red violet and the blue violet, blue green and yellow green. So this is the basic color theory. Now, I was saying that we are placing these colors in this order also because they will split into temperatures the same way as they appear here on this, this circle. So what is temperature? Temperature is the relative warmth or coolness of the color. Warm hues are red, yellow, and orange. And then we have our cool colors, green, blue, and violet. So how can we tell if the color is cool or warm? Well, I have to give you bad news because each color on the color wheel, it can have two versions. So it can be cool or it can be warm. So let's take, for example, the yellows. Here, I will put one yellow, and here I'll put another yellow. So now, when they are side by side, we can see that this yellow is definitely warmer. It's closer to the orange, and this yellow, lemony yellow, is reaching towards the green. The closer to reds and oranges, the warmer the color, the closer to blues, the cooler. So let's do this for every color. Let's do this for the primaries. Now, if I have my reds, here I will place them. Here we have the magenta, I'll place them here. So we have a red. And another red near it. So let's think color-wise, where would we place them? If this one, if we take this one, it's leaning for me towards the orange, so I would place it closer here. So that would be my warm red. It's still red, but it leans towards the orange, so it's a warm red. This red leans closer towards the purple, so it would be a cool red. Now we go to the purples, and we do the same thing. So let's place two colors here. One purple and another purple. So you can clearly see the difference. We have one purple that leans closer towards the blue. So I would put my purple here. So this is going to be closer to the blue, cool side, cool purple. And this purple, it leans closer to red. So this would be my warm purple. So, I hope you start to understand the distinction between the cool and the warm colors, because to be honest, when I started out, I kind of got a bit lost, I think, and understanding everything. But it's very easy when you have something as a reference. So if, when you have another color as a reference, when you see these colors on their own, it's very difficult to say if they are cool or warm sometimes. But when you have another color standing, the same from the same color family standing next to it, you can already separate them into cool and warm, like in this case, the cooler and the warmer purples. Next, let's do the same thing for the blue, and I will be using the same blue that we used here. And let's put it here. And now let's put next to it another blue. This is a very pretty blue. So now, as we look at these two blues, we're not looking which one is darker or lighter, we're just looking at the temperature. So for me, this blue is closer towards the red. So I'm gonna put it closer to the red. And this blue leans closer towards the green. So I have my warm blue and cool blue. 
even though blue as a color is a cool color, but at the same time, it has two versions of it. So for each color, each and every color, you can find versions of warm and cool. And now if we take a look at our color wheel again, if we divide it, imagine of drawing a line here in between, So we have the cool side of the circle and the warm side of the circle. So the yellow belongs to the warm and the blue and green and purple belong to the cool. So here we have yellow, orange and red and on the other side on the cool we have purple, blue and green. So this is the basic color theory. Now let's talk about some different aspects of color. One of them is value. So what is value? Value is the degree of lightness or darkness of the color. There are three ways to define the value. So tint is color, lightened color mixed in with white, for example. Shade, it's a mix with black, so it's a darkened color. And tone is mixes with gray. So let's start with creating our three versions of value for one color. Let's take our blue. I really like this color. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the tint, the shade, and the tone. So first we will place our blue here. Now, if I wanted to lighten this color and create a tint, I would take my white, and what I would do First, I'll put my white down, and then I will add my blue and blend it in. So now you see that the color pretty much is the same blue, but it's a tint of this color. So this color is lighter if we add even more white. So now we can say that we have a tint of this blue, of this cool blue. Let's create a shade of this blue. Again, I'm putting my blue. Pastel is amazing for creating these color wheels and learning color theory because it's just so easy to maneuver and use. And now I'm going to add black to my blue. And you can still see that it's not completely black. It's a shade of the same blue. So we can add more color here just so it's not too dark. And now the last thing is a tone. So a tone, we mix a gray color. So I'm gonna use a gray pastel to our color. So again, we have the pure color. Then we're mixing it in with the gray. So this is a tone of that color. So it's toned down with this gray. So here we have a tint, a shade, and the tone. Value can be used to create beautiful contrasts, so depending on the atmosphere and mood of your painting, you can use value to intensify that feeling in the painting itself. Next, I want to talk about intensity. Intensity is also called chroma or saturation of the color. So basically, intensity is the degree of purity or brightness of a color. Low intensity colors look duller and grayer, and high intensity colors look brighter. The extreme of low intensity is neutral gray. So Let's take our gray, we're going to create, so this is a color with very low intensity and a color with very high intensity, let's take for example this red, so this is a very bright color, two opposites. So we can create a gradation from a completely neutralized low intensity color to a very bright color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lot of gray here and then as I as I go I will lighten the touch and then on this side I will add a very intense red and as I go towards my gray I will lighten the touch. So here if I blend this in we will have a gradation between low intensity color and high intensity color. 
Also, important to remember that once you have lowered the intensity of a color, you will not be able to return it to the original hue. So if I have my red here, and if I add some gray, or dull it down with a complementary, we will get it. But you can see that if I add more red, it's still not as bright and as lively as this red here. So you can't regain it back. You can cover it, um, for example, if you're working with oils or any opaque medium like um, acrylics, then you can probably cover the area again with a new layer of color. But once you mix the two colors together, that will lo lower the intensity of the color. You will not be able to get it back. So next I want to talk about color schemes. So we're going to go back to our circle. So the color wheel and let's talk about different color schemes. So when you're painting, you have to keep in mind that any color that you use in your painting has to have a relationship with another color in it. So there are different color schemes that are used by different artists and these color schemes, they allow you to obtain that balance in the painting without the painting seeming too um, disorganized, too disbalanced. So now that I start talking about it, maybe it's going to get clearer. The first color scheme that I want to talk about, it's complementary colors. So what are the complementary colors? Colors are really rich and wonderful when used together, but you need to know which colors to use together. So these colors that make each other brighter side by side are the ones that are opposite each other on the color wheel. In wet media, you can also mix these opposite colors that are called complements and they will create a neutral gray. If we have a yellow, its complement is going to be violet. If we have a green, its complement is going to be red. If we have a, an orange, its complement is going to be blue. So let's try it here. Let's try to put our yellow. On its own, it looks quite bright, but when we place a violet next to it, it just creates that contrast that pops. Orange and blue. And then we also have red and green. So also, if you look closely, here I put all my cool colors and here are all the warm colors. But now we can also try and blend them together and you will create the, you will see that they create this kind of mud that is called a neutral color. They neutralize each other and the color becomes duller. The same goes here. So you mix violet and yellow. And the same goes here in the blue and orange. So when mixing complements, these colors will neutralize each other. And when you place the complements together next to each other, they will give a pop in your painting. One thing to remember though is that one color needs to be the dominant one. If you have both colors that are 50-50 in your painting, so the painting is kind of has the same amount of orange and the same amount of blue, it's going to look um, not very pleasant. So every time that you use a complementary color scheme, it's a good idea to use one color as a dominant one and then the other one, for example, 80% of orange and the other one would be just accents of blue. And that is going to create that pop in your painting. Next, let's move to another color scheme and it's near complementary colors. So what is a near complementary color scheme? Instead of direct complements, in this case, a color next to the direct complement is used. For example, if you mix these colors in wet media also, they will create these more vibrant, colorful mixes. So if these will create a neutral color mix, then the near complementary colors will have more color to the neutral mixes. So what is a near complementary color? A near complementary color is, for example, a yellow and a red violet. So we find a complement and then we move to one side or to the other. So let's try to create this near complement scheme. What I'm doing, I'm going to move this a bit. And 
So if we have a yellow, and we will put our red violet next to it. So I'm putting red and then the same blue. And I'm mixing it in. Or we can actually put the red violet that I have here. You can see how these two colors, and also this is another red violet, how these two colors, they are contrasting with one another. The same goes for red, and if we go to the complement of green, we can step to yellow green or to blue green. So for example, if we take a yellow orange, we can see that its complement is blue violet, and we step to one side or to the other side of the blue violet, and we can use either violet or we can use the blue. So for any color that you see on your color wheel, you can choose a near complement. Next is the split complementary color scheme. So what does it mean? Split complementary color scheme comprises three colors. So instead of two, it will have three colors. And one is the color that you choose and two on either side of its complement. So for example, if we have the orange, we have the complement as blue, right? So from the blue, blue green and the blue violet. So this way we will create A split complementary color scheme. The same thing we can do for the yellow. We have our yellow and we have our violet. So on both sides of the violet we have the blue violet and we have the red violet. And this is our split complementary color scheme. So again very important that you choose one color to be the dominant one in your painting. For example, these two colors might be the dominant ones and the yellow can be added as accents. As I said, 80-20 relationship or even 90-10% relationship. So for each color you can find a split complementary color. So using split complementary colors will add more color to the artwork because you're using more colors and it still maintains the harmony of the painting. So it's very important to actually see the relationship between the colors. So next is analogous complementary colors. So what are the analogous complementary colors? For that we will first have to look at the analogous colors, what those are. These are the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, yellow, yellow orange, and green, uh, yellow green. So we have, these are analogous colors. Or for example, yellow orange, orange, red orange. So Three colors are next to each other on color wheel. No matter how many colors you use, it's very important, once again, I'm stressing it, to establish the color relationship from the very beginning. Analogous complementary color schemes means that one color, let's choose yellow again, then we add its complement and two colors on each side of it. So this creates a four, colors, four color color scheme. And this enhances the contrast in the artwork and it's very again very important to see the relationship of the colors on the color wheel so if we take the yellow we have the violet as its complement and then we have the two analogous colors as two additional complements and this is called the analogous complementary colors so instead of just two comp two colors like we had First the complementary colors, then we had the split complementary, the near complementary, and then the analogous is four colors together. So when you think about it, it's very easy to understand all of the theory um, once you actually try it out. And I suggest that you go through the video together with me creating the color wheel and testing out your colors. It doesn't matter which media you use, if you use colored pencils or acrylics or oils, um, it's still... Um, color mixing and when you're actually using wet media because pastels sometimes they create muddy mixes but with pastels I tend to use the particular color of the crayon to create um, the color that I need so I have a large collection of pastels but with watercolor for example I use a limited palette and depending on the color wheel I can create most vibrant 
mixes when I need them and the dullest mixes when I need them. So one last thing that I wanted to say is that when you create mixes in wet media, for example, not talking about pastels, but when you are mixing to create the most colorful, most vibrant mixes, especially, for example, watercolor acrylics, you have to mix the colors that are closer to each other. So what I mean by closer to each other is if I want to mix a vibrant orange, I will take a warm yellow and I will take a warm red. If I mix the warm yellow and the warm red, they are closer together on the color wheel than cold yellow and cool yellow and cool red. These will create a very vibrant mix. If I were to use my warm yellow and my cool red, it would create a duller mix. So not as vibrant. The same goes for any color. When you look at the position of these colors, if you want to create a very vibrant violet, you use your cool red because it's closer to the blue and your warm red. This will create the brightest, most vibrant violet. If you need to dial it down, you can warm your cool red or your warm red with a cool blue or your warm red with a warm blue. So this is going to create a duller violet. And again, to create vibrant greens, you use your cool yellow because it's closer to blue, right? And your cool blue because it's closer to yellow. And this way you will create the most vibrant greens. Again, if you want to, a duller green, if you're painting landscapes, for example, you can use your warm yellow and your cool blue or your warm blue. It doesn't matter because already this color is further away. I hope you found this video very insightful and if you have any questions I will be really happy to answer them. Let me know if you would like to know about something else regarding art and color theory. Also I have different tutorials on my Patreon channel and here on YouTube so check those out if you're working with pastels because I'm in love with pastels. And I have also different artsy vlog entries on my YouTube channel as well where you can learn about what it is and how it is to be an artist. So I thank you for watching this video. I hope you watched it until the end and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could click that like button down there. And yeah, leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate that. So this is it for now. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!